Hi, I'm Carol Robinson. Welcome to this edition of County Happenings, where we get to the nitty gritty with the county mayor, Rogers Anderson. How are you today? I'm doing well, so finally. I, if I, <laughs> yeah, people only knew what goes on behind the scenes here. Just getting this show started this yeah, morning. Yeah, sometimes was a it's chore. really. <laughs> well, it's a mighty busy time. Yeah, yeah. We've got uh, all kinds of things happening around the country that's impacting us, and we have budget coming up. Well, budget time is uh, upon us. Uh, every year uh, in the month of February and March, we begin that process. Uh, Which actually begins in October. But. Well, yeah, <laughs> actually, it actually begins the day after you approve the budget. But uh, the formal process is putting paperwork together, the guidelines. This year we waited a little bit on the guidelines to come out to send to all the departments, to the other elected officials. Uh, we were waiting on the re uh, special referendum that occurred with the sales tax. And of course, as you mm -hmm. know, that passed 66% in the county. Low turnout, about a little under 10, but the, but it certainly cleared all of the precincts, the voting precincts mm -hmm. by um, every single one of the precincts voted in favor of uh, doing the sales tax. So that goes in uh, effect in uh, April, April 1. And so, after that passed, that gave us uh, some new revenue that we could anticipate coming in over the course of the year. And of course, that's for schools. Yes, yes. Uh, that's important to mm -hmm. remember that the sales tax referendum was for uh, the cost of bricks and mortar for public education mm -hmm. only, both the Franklin Special School District and to Williamson County Public Schools, not for operational. So the budget process has now began with the operational mm -hmm. side. And through today, we're about 90%, 95% of going through each individual uh, department, their requests, new personnel, uh, programs they've got. And we try to do a five-year budget and drop off one year, add on another. Mm -hmm. And then you have a 10-year vision. Yeah, uh, It's so hard, Carol, to, to look at the growth we're having in Williamson County, which affects every That's department. Sad. Yeah. Uh, and say what's going to happen outside of five years. But five years is a, is a great snapshot. Well, at least you're not reacting. You're that's correct. And, and there are always things coming up. We're mm -hmm. going to talk about one of those things you mentioned in the opening uh, dialogue uh, about school safety and what's happening throughout the, mm -hmm. out the uh, other parts of the United States and the world, that you have to react a little bit to that because... Uh, you didn't foresee some of the things that are happening, but uh, the budget guidelines this year were uh, status quo. Uh, we did implement a, a request a 2% pay raise for all of the employees, but everything else was going to be a status quo. So if the um, Channel 3 here, WC uh, TV, if their uh, budget was X next year, it had to be X too, mm -hmm. except for they couldn't move money around within their their lines. Uh, maybe they didn't need as much money for electricity and they could move it over to pay for something else. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line, it needed to be the same um, is, unless that, there were some unusual circumstances. So when, when departments are creating their budget, do they start with zero? Or do they just start with what they had last year and both, work backwards? Both. Um, we have gone to a, what we call, a, the term is called a zero-based zero base budget, where they have to build it back up. Mm -hmm. We didn't do that year, this year. We did that two years ago, I think, maybe three, that we actually said you had to come back in and build that up. Mm -hmm. um, that takes a lot of time and effort. And so what's, if, it, and you can look at the, the fund balance at this point of time. We're very fortunate here that all those budgets have to come through me for my signature, and so they're not able to go out and spend. If they have an extra dollar left in their yeah. budget, they just can't run out and spend it on the last 30 days. Um, but most every department has some fund balance that something changes. Maybe a piece of equipment here they were anticipating going bad. Maybe it lasted or we could repair it. And, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't do zero-based budgeting every year. But every, about every third year, we like to do that, just to keep everybody on Get their toes. Get back to the ground yeah. floor and, and reevaluate. The one thing you would imagine, uh, particularly you and I, I'm older than you, but we're about the same age. Ten years ago, 15 years ago, 25 years ago, 
we had very little money for technology. Mm -hmm. And today, that's a huge, huge part of everyone's budget. It, everything from, from the phones we use to the computers that we have to have, all, uh, and, but it's the software cost mm -hmm. to renew all of those things every single every year. And most of those are on an annual lease or rent that the software company, mm -hmm. and so to get that update. Yeah, it's no more you're you know, not all get, getting the floppy disk and just sticking it in correct, and you own it. Correct. You have to rent it. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So our IT budgets, um, our IT section of our budget in almost every department uh, continues to rise. Uh, when you buy a, um, a software program now, it has an annual maintenance fee to keep it up to date. And so we try to do business through our RFPs, RFQs, all of the bidding processes we're required to go through when, when there's a certain value over $25,000. We try to restrict that to companies that have got a good track record or that mm -hmm. have been around a while. Many startup businesses have great intentions, but they go out of business. Yeah. Great ideas, but if you buy and if you don't have that support for the backup, just like in your your television or mm -hmm. your phone at home, when something goes wrong and they're no longer there, oops, you got yeah. a problem. Yeah. Who, who are you going to call? <laughs> who are you going to call? Uh, wasn't there a commercial? Yeah. <laughs> I think there was. But, so that's a big that's a big change in the way we do businesses. Mm -hmm. But that was happening when I came out of the commercial side of working for the 25, six years that I was there. Um, the IT side was beginning to, to mm -hmm. come up. Today, it's just a given. Yeah, it's all it's, it's it's in everything. But on the other side, a lot of costs have reduced because of IT. Uh, you remember 25, 30 years ago that IT was going to eliminate jobs and all that. Mm -hmm. All it all it did was create new jobs. Right. Now, some of the older jobs, if you didn't keep your skill set up, if you didn't mm -hmm. go back to school or or learn to do that. You, it would, yeah, it but it's like bug, had, buggy whips. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the old buggy whip. I hadn't <laughs> thought of that in a long time. So that side of the budget, but I expect our budget to be status quo. The budget mm -hmm. committee voted, a, like I said, a 2% pay raise. <coughs> Excuse me. A, um, a, a, a no increase in the budget operating. Now, you could submit for new personnel, but we've only had... Very few people asking for personnel. Yeah, okay. The sheriff, yes. Yeah. <coughs> um, the replacement personnel is fine. Replacement, yes. You still have to get that approved. A lot of times right. we will have an individual that maybe retire or will find another job, and the department head has to come back in and say, yeah, I still need that. Mm -hmm. uh, or could you, could you uh, blend that job with something else, make an adjustment on the something else person right. on their pay, uh, it's just not an automatic anymore uh, to to get that job because the, the world changes. Mm -hmm. What we're really short in, believe it or not, is in the maintenance area, in the in the uh, uh, heating and cooling and electrical uh, yeah. people. That the skill sets for to work with your hands. It's hard to find mm -hmm. them. Well, yeah, because <laughs> they make more money in the outside world. They can. A lot of them have gone independent in business like that. They their have own. that too, so it's a it's a chore. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a great crew. We, but we're always looking for more men and women mm -hmm. uh, that have got that skill set to work with their hand. As you know, something goes out at your house. Your hubby's uh, mighty good with his hands, but there's some things he probably just yeah. won't touch. And <laughs> yeah. For me, it's electricity. I don't mind. Uh, yeah, he's do, pretty pretty careful about that. <laughs> you know, I go to switch out a plug or something. Mm -hmm. I turn all the juice off to the house, and then I'm still yeah. nervous. <laughs> yeah. What if something is actually? You know, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I don't. I don't touch it. I let somebody else do it. Um, and we're back to the the budget, but it go, it kind of flows into. Um, school safety, because that's that's um, probably going to impact the budget this year unexpectedly. I mean, luckily you've got time to react and do something, but be pre pro proactive and eventually. But um, I mean, Williamson County did a great job. How was it? Five or six years ago, after, after Sandy, Sandy Hook, Hook. Um, of putting SROs in all the schools and. Um, but then after the school shooting down in Florida just recently, you want to reevaluate what you have. 
We are adding, by the time this show tapes, the county commission will have before them, and I expect them to pass it unanimously, um, to put additional school resource officers, we call those SROs, additional school resource officers in all of our schools that have a population of 1,500 or more. That's the number that has been chosen. So there will be eight additional SROs that will come under the sheriff for his training and his uh, guidance. When you made reference to the Sandy Hook incident that happened in the New England area mm -hmm. a few years ago, immediately the commission and the elected leaders and the, the law enforcement community got together. and Within 30 days, we had the approval to put SROs in every mm -hmm. single school. And that meant not only Williamson County schools, but Franklin Special School District schools. Absolutely, they're taxpayers. Every public school. Every public school, there was an SRO. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to where we are today, as a, if, if a school comes on, elementary, middle, or high school, <coughs> that's built into the budget. So we're up to about 45, 46 SROs in our county school sign, and then about eight over in the Franklin Special School District. I wish it was just that easy. These men and women that are our SROs, uh, they work the same schedule as the school when it's open, from opening to close. Uh, so if it starts in August and they finish out in May, that individual works that same schedule mm -hmm. in the summer months when he or she is not at the school or in additional training, then they go on patrol or they go on, the, the they stay on the payroll. That's when they're almost mandated. That's when you have to take your two weeks or three weeks yeah. of vacation because when that school opens up, you're back in there. Mm -hmm. But when you do SROs, it's like any job that they get sick, they that have vacation. That's my next question, what do you do? And you have to have support people mm -hmm. to fill in for them. Then you need supervisors that will cover them and do the additional training. Uh, Jeff, uh, Sheriff Jeff Long has uh, done a masterful job. There are SRO school training places that they have to go to to mm -hmm. get that extra certification. And they have to continually oh, get absolutely. education. It's not just um, a one-time thing. Um, they are armed in our schools. Uh, these men and women are armed, and therefore they must stay um, very efficient on the mm -hmm. latest marksmanships and skill sets that are required of those men and women. So we are adding more to them, and so we're going to have somewhere in the neighborhood of 58 to 60 individuals for all of our schools. Well, each SRO it's just like anyone else. They want to be paid. They should mm -hmm. be paid. Then their gear and the vehicle. They have to have a vehicle at the school, right. school facility. So when we buy new automobiles, we, they, awesome. they get a, a three- or four-year-old <laughs> automobile with 100 to 150, 200,000 mm -hmm. miles on it. It's still operational, but they drive it to the school. They park it on the front lawn. That's a deterrent, mm -hmm. as you, all of us know. Um, and so we're going to be up to 60 uh, individuals that will be in our schools on, on a daily basis, and they don't rotate. Uh, you would have a school assigned to you. I would have one if we were SROs. Mm -hmm. and, and the purpose of that is to get the children and the teachers mm -hmm. comfortable with that same individual. And it's also good that they get to know the school really well, the school, the way, the whole setup of the school, how people move in the school, um, so that in, in an emergency they can react. I was over at uh, one of the schools, the Franklin Special School, the other day, and they had the police chief of, of, um, of Franklin and, and Sheriff Long and the personnel there talking about that very thing. Uh, they're not there. They're, they're not there to direct traffic out on the front no. when there's a <laughs> um, traffic jam. <laughs> Um, a lot of people will say, well, they don't look too busy, but 
they don't need to be on the front. They need to be in those hallways. Mm -hmm. They need to be walking around when school is um, in session, when the classes are going on, checking those doors. Mm -hmm. it's, it's funny, one of the biggest uh, criteria that when you do school safety reviews is someone has propped the back door open, yeah. put a little rock, mm -hmm. a little something there. Just so they've gone out to their car and they want to be able to come back. Mm -hmm. They've now posted signs all over our schools. Dr. Looney came out with a, a couple of uh, new ideas that I thought were just absolutely brilliant. Number one, when you go to that school today, you must have a badge, and many of us have badges to get in and out of our buildings. I know the press does. You yeah. all have a badge. But if you don't, as a parent, you have to show a photo ID. Even though the office probably knows you anyway. It's photo ID time. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're trying to be very cognitive on young boys and girls that have graduated mm -hmm. or have gone through the school system. They're no longer there. And they, they want to come back and see their buddies. I get that. Well, you and I did that when yeah. we were back home. But those days are gone. The other thing they've changed is there's one entry point and one exit yeah, point. Yeah, and that, that's been in the works for since Sandy Hook, I think where they've rerouted that you, you can't just walk into the school. No. You, you can walk out. Yeah, but you can't walk in. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and there's a maze to go through. I'm, uh, any school I've been, it, there's a definite, you know, in here and that. And, <laughs> and those are the things we were talking about in the budget we didn't plan for. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have planned for uh, increased security, increased measures, looking at our buildings, cameras, uh, the flow, how do we handle um, a different situation. Those men and women know how to do it. Walkie-talkies, uh, the cell phones in case the walkie-talkie is knocked off, uh, cameras, the whole thing. But the extra personnel that's needed now because of issues that are happening across our country. A middle school principal would tell you they need two SROs in a middle school. A high school would say, they need two, maybe three. You right. take Franklin High School with the... The way it's set up and it's just spread out and, all over the place. And we just took over the old Columbia State right. building. So that's a detached building mm -hmm. that one SRO can't be in both, both places, places at the same time. Right. So you've got to have one over there. And those are just extra costs we're incurring because of the world we live in today. Mm -hmm. And I don't think many parents complain about that. Now, there's the argument about... Um, um, Teachers having weapons, uh, that's, a, that's a philosophical argument that's going on in mm -hmm. Nashville, as we sit here and right. talk about it, and all across our nation. So we've asked uh, Sheriff Long also to reach out and extend our arm to our private schools. Uh, so let's, let's eliminate the conversation that money was no object. Mm -hmm. Let's put that on the shelf because it's always an object. But at the time of an incident, whether it's public or private, parochial, school, the sheriff and the police jurisdiction within that municipality. They're going to be active. The Calvary's on the way. Right. And whether it's Franklin, which will have jurisdictional mm -hmm. within the city limits, and Brentwood will have theirs, you can bet the sheriff's on the way. The SROs, SROs are in those schools under the jurisdiction of the, of the sheriff. sheriff, and he or she has is communicating back and forth. But in our private schools, which parents make choices of where to send their children, and that's an individual parent's mm -hmm. decision, 100%. But, but they it, still pay taxes. But they still pay taxes, and... At the 40,000 foot, 50,000 foot level that I'm at and looking down, they deserve to have that same protection mm -hmm. and the ability for our law enforcement community to get in. And we need to know, we being the sheriff, I'm the mouthpiece for this, I don't do this, um, but, but we need to know the camera system, the door mm -hmm. situation. All of our public schools, we have an action plan. We have a building draw out. We have cameras situated in there that we can see the halls and the doorways. We know what's going on in that building before mm -hmm. we have to go, before the cavalry, before, before they arrive. 
If a school doesn't have that, and we don't know what's going on there, then our men and women that are going into these buildings are at greater risk. Mm -hmm. And something may be happening on the left side of the school when we need to be over on the right-hand side of the school. So it's coordinating all those efforts. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, the, and those private schools may have a plan, but that plan needs to be shared. That plan needs to be shared. And use the resources that government has. Mm -hmm. um, the police chiefs and the, and the sheriffs, uh, th they have men and women. They've gone to special training in schools. Private schools, as a general rule, can use our services, but more or less they may be outsourcing to hire somebody mm -hmm. on a private level that would come in and say, we need, that's fine, that's your business, but we all need to be on the same page. Right. And right. we need to know, because at the, at the time of the incident, the security services are not, not the, going to be the ones not that, be the one yeah. that respond. It's going to be the, the police chiefs and the fire chiefs. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and fire is another issue. As you know, here lately, it uh, seems to be the technique is to pull the fire alarm. That gets everybody out in the hall and they can just... And, and mm -hmm. it gets everybody out. So the fire marshals, the police chiefs, governance needs to sit down and mm -hmm. take over. That what what is accepted? What is a response time? We don't want to put anybody in danger because of fire, but we don't want anybody to come rushing out of the hall mm -hmm. because uh, of an in an unsafe environment. And how do we handle that? The building materials we're using today are much much greater, but we have some older schools, right. not many, <laughs> but but. Uh, you, you don't want to say don't come out, mm -hmm. but you want to know what's going on and having that communication. And um, you want to be able to somebody in the office or somebody when the uh, alarm goes off to say, "This is not a drill," and stay in your places. But but you know, be if able you to, can, if you can. Uh, so many of our schools, a lot of the smoke that comes out will be in the the kitchen area, mm -hmm. or it's an air conditioning unit that's uh, uh, you know the motors. Uh, the belt's burned, and so it, it gets in your duck work and everybody's... Or chemistry done. lab. Or the chemistry <laughs> lab. That's another good one. But there are, there, there are ways that the professionals can sit down and evaluate each mm -hmm. and every one of those scenarios. Right. And I think it's the right step to do. I think it's the right step to reach out to our private schools um, because they're still children, mm -hmm. and they're our teachers, right. and they're our citizens for the most part. They may live in Davidson County, but they're citizens and we need to give them protection, and we will, mm -hmm. and we need to protect ourselves the best way we can. It's a first time reach out. That's, and that's, that's very um, fast forward thinking um, in, on your part, the sheriff's part, and whoever else is involved in this. Police chiefs, everybody be at the table, mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, that's the things you should be concentrating. Right, and then at the end of the day, the most important little creatures are those kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are, and I think that's what, I don't know how much time we've got left, probably three or four minutes, I don't want to take it all, but I do want to say that at the end of the day, that's what makes you, our county unique. Not that other counties can't mm -hmm. think of it, there are many more mayors smarter than I am. Uh, there are many more good men and women in our community, but uh, the things we do here are often the springboard for other communities in, w mm -hmm. in the state of Tennessee. And most people say, well, it's because you've all got all that wealth. We don't tax wealth. That's called a state income right. tax, and you and I are both <laughs> against it. And, and there's, no one, there's not one in the there's state. There's not now. one in the state. <laughs> but you do have to evaluate each and everything mm -hmm. you do, and it changes all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, and with, with um, school safety, uh, I think even just our talk today, as if, if for anybody watching, as um, the information you've given are, is going to make a lot of people feel better. Because there's been a lot of talk. Uh, I mean, I've heard from people saying, well, I don't know why they have those SROs. They're not even armed. And they are armed. They are armed. Um, and the question of, well, what if they're sick? And you've just addressed that. And and um, we do, you know, we we've had our we've had a bad flu season. Yeah. Um, and SROs get sick. SROs well, are especially around, when they're around those kids. Those kids and they get sick. And 
you have to have a reserve of people to backfill. Yeah, them. just like you have a substitute teacher, you have to have. It will. But you have to have somebody trained to put eight people on. Additionally, through the remainder of 2018, when school is out in May, we probably won't get our objective met because they're not certified to be do to be a, called an SRO. Now you can take a police officer and put him in there, mm -hmm. but he hasn't been certified. But it will cost a million dollars, additional money, to put eight SROs in our schools and equip them, and provide them a vehicle, even though right. even it's, a used vehicle. it's a used vehicle, you've got to replace it on the mm -hmm. other side. And it's becoming a division of itself because of nothing that you or I really right. want, but it's probably one of the highest priorities. Plus our community is growing in, in our county mm -hmm. that population growth just... It brings in different people. Different people, but it, it affects everything you do in government. Everything. Mm -hmm. Roads, this is the one we know about. <laughs> Schools, mm -hmm. juvenile, we need to have a talk on the juvenile system, the court right. system. Everything we do, more people requires mm -hmm. more concentrated effort. Yeah, you get so many new personalities added to, and, and that's to, not to say that we, didn't have, we don't have issues even before people move in. It's just that they're multiplied and piled upon and well and on top of that it costs money to do yeah. a lot of these things yeah, and so. budget committee this year has already said no property tax mr mayor yes i hear you <laughs> and so we we have to move those dollars and, around and, be creative and, work. and get the get and that's job. hard with schools because yeah. they're anticipating 1200 more kids mm -hmm. over this year oh next year you're gonna have to stop st start stacking them <laughs> yeah. the kids or the buildings the kids <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're just about done here, so um, just want to, uh, uh, if there's anybody have any questions about the SRO program. Please call the sheriff. Call my office, 615-790-5700. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you've got ideas, we've had a lot of people email. There's a lot of social uh, conversation about this right. and new procedures. And, yeah. and get the information. Don't, don't react to hearsay. Get the correct information. That is so important, and the, the new motto, if you see something, say, say something. something. And in Williamson County, something will be done. Yeah. If you see something, we're telling those children and teachers, mm -hmm. say something. Yeah. And, and they're listening. And they're listening. Yeah, and that's good to know. And we're so glad you were here to watch and listen to us talk about the SRO program and the budget, which usually is pretty boring. Yes. <laughs> and we'll see you next time on County Happenings. Quiet Voices by Susie Sims Irvin. Quiet voices clothe winter's jagged edge. Doves murmur secrets under velvet breath. Blurred hills stand still, frozen to woolen sky, stand to wait in line outside in freezing rain. Black satin streams bathe themselves beneath down robes of snow. Above their flowing nakedness, whispers of vapor rise to trace their sleek unwinding through the muted browns of fields laid by. Night reads to himself from poets of starlight. Day gathers clouds for the table. Quiet voices need not speak for those who listen.